I had two out of the three forms for the quest sculptures very firmly in my head. The third form was more of a blur. It hadn't quite crystallised. I'd been searching. I knew what I wanted to say. The actual form was um, eluding me. It wasn't until I was absentmindedly speaking on the phone one day when I happened to pick up an offcut of metal. Uh, it was some armature wire that I'd cut. And I suddenly had a moment of clarity uh, when I looked down and I realised that's the form that I wanted to go with. That was the birth of the Energy series. Well, I had actually never heard of Alexander until the Quest show at Chatsworth in 2015. Deep, deep blue. The, the, the light seemed to em emanate from. They're quite extraordinary things. And so that's when I first saw them literally being taken out of their boxes. I absolutely knew it was going to be a success. I, I just was convinced of that. Really very minutely different in, uh, in colour, um, but all the same tone. They were just the most still and quiet, yet um, commanding works. What really captures their eye first is colour and glaze and um, surface and, and shape and they're responding to those elemental points first. Once he'd made that decision, which of course has absolutely nothing to do with me, to go to Wilton, uh, he was set fair on the course which he's now pursuing of being uh, an artist. Just wondering if I could put in an order for a tonne of the terracotta crane clay that I usually get from you. And so he knew about art pottery, studio pottery. Uh, and I think that seed was always in him. It just took a little while to germinate. So we, we, we've sort of been keeping up to speed, more or less, with his career ever since it started. Looking back, I was completely consumed uh, with the making and the technical, the technical challenge of putting together uh, what are quite big objects made out of um, made out of clay? Fantastic enthusiasm, real professionalism. When he started explaining to me about sort of the more, some of the more arcane aspects of how he makes beautiful things, I found that really interesting, much more interesting than any book about it I've ever tried to read. I was very keen indeed, um, and it probably showed that he should have his first show here at Chatsworth because. For Amanda and me, it, his work combines the two things that we really love most in the world of art, and that is new things, and for me particularly, ceramic things. What that told me about the work was that um, it held its own there and looked absolutely amazing. People were mesmerised by the pieces. Transferring those pieces to Canary Wharf was going to do two things. I felt it was going to be interesting and probably very useful for Alexander to see the work in an entirely commercial space. I also thought that um, the works would definitely hold their own there and um, would be quite compelling. I think I probably arrived on site when um, the, uh, the, the base piece was ready uh, to receive the top uh, section. Uh, so it was a very exciting moment to be there and I think everyone applauded once uh, the uh, uh, lifting equipment was pulled away and it stood there looking quite stately and not wonderful in its space. There's been monumental sculpture in the garden at Chatsworth since the first duke rebuilt the house in, sort of, say, 1700. By chance, the Beyond Limits of Sotheby's uh, 
annual exhibition of monumental outdoor sculpture uh, arrived here 11 years ago. Each year, the Beyond Limits exhibition, which Sotheby's um, mounts at Chatsworth, tries to put together a, a, a variety of artists, materials, and um, nationalities, and present as, as diverse a selection of work as possible. It was actually a, it was a no-brainer. It really was because. Being so familiar with the grounds and the gardens at Chatsworth over those years, I'm fairly good at being able to judge what will work in what space. And there's an extraordinary location at Chatsworth called the Serpentine Hedge, which meanders in and out all the way up to a bust of the Sixth Duke, and the Sixth Duke sits on a fluted column. So I just felt that there was a wonderful synergy with Energy 2, which twists as it goes up. Um, being in the serpentine hedge, and in fact the, the, the land actually rises um, you know, behind the column, behind Energy 2, and I just felt it worked so well. It was a vertical sculpture, and certainly vertical sculptures are easier to place. Um, it's called, the show's called Beyond Limits, we like scale. Um, but best of all, it had this beautiful luster, this lustrous deep blue, which looked fantastic. I mean, even in overcast skies, it was really sort of looking incredibly punchy and strong. And the Energy 2, which is part of the Beyond Limits thing, the exhibition which is on at the moment, is a, 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 an even more magnificent piece in many ways than the, the energy pieces that we have. And it's something which um, I've seen Alexander developing. It must have been so difficult physically and, uh, you know, technically to do it. But it's there and it looks wonderful. Uh, I wish it was going to stay there, but of course it won't. Um, I'm really excited to know what he's going to be making next year, but we'll have to wait and see. And I could see that being presented in the Beyond Limits catalogue and being a bit of a showstopper. You know, as you flick through the catalogue, you would, you would definitely pause at that space, partly because of the beautiful location, but most of all because of Alexander's extraordinary dexterity in creating this, this object. It shows a, a, a graduate, a, a step that Alexander has taken in size and in technical ability. It was one of the final entries from my selection and it was the first to sell. And indeed we went on to sell a second cast in the edition. It's three plus one artist proof, so we're halfway through. Looking back through history, you you know, ceramics was, was a beautiful room in a schloss or a chateau or a, a castle, what have you. But now ceramics has sort of come out of that space and it's inhabiting the open air. And I think um, it's high time that that happens. And I think um, the more that people appreciate contemporary ceramics for, for its abilities and, um, and its possibilities, the better. Sculptures with scale, that relationship is turned on its head, you can't pick them up. So you walk around them, you look up at them, you touch them, you feel them. It's fundamentally a, a different relationship and it's, it, it creates different response and I think it's an exciting one.